Hey there YouTube, today I'm going to show you how to replace your voltage regulator on your 1996 Mercury outboard. This is an ELPTO model, uh, 2 plus 2 configuration, 4 cylinder. So this is what happened out on the lake. And as you can see, the voltage is fluctuating uh, with the RPM and it's going above 14 and a half. So um, considering the battery was good and tested at 12.7 volts, um, it's definitely the regulator. So if you call a Mercury dealer, the part's going to be like $260. Uh, you can get it for $200 online or you can get these off-brand ones. This one was $35 from a semi-reputable company with good reviews. Uh, this one was $17, actually it's $15 shipped. Um, so what, what I did was I bought this semi-expensive one and the really cheap one as a backup. So if you get the OEM model, it's going to come with an inline fuse on your positive battery leg. Um, it's a 30 amp fuse, so if you're concerned about fire, which is why they added the fuse to the OEM, um, just put a marine fuse inline on the um, battery plus leg. So if you're thinking about getting the cheapo and then the $35 one, uh, I do note on the really cheap one, let's just take the yellows for example, you can tell the cheap one has really thin wires whereas the um, nicer one has a thicker wire. You gotta give your boat a hug every once in a while. So here's the voltage regulator. It's held on by two 8mm bolts. And here's my part number for reference. You'll see that mine has the 5 wire. Two yellows, two reds, and one gray. Don't let this black confuse you. This is coming from somewhere else that just uses this as a ground into the frame. Alrighty, I think it's going to be easier to take this off first. Be sure to disconnect your battery. Hey, look at that. No problem. I love working on boats because there's no rust. And with that off, you just pull, you just disconnect these wires. A little bit of play in there. Pop. Pop. You definitely want to disconnect the battery. Here's the old regulator. Looks a little cruddy in there, but more interestingly, but this yellow terminal here looks like it's melted. Hmm. Well, good thing I'm replacing it. Looks like the wires on this new one are actually longer than the original. This uh, cheaper $15 one has about the same length wires as the original. So the one that was more expensive didn't actually fit into my connectors here. The yellow, the male plugs, the male plugs were too thin and the female plugs were too large so I think this one's gonna go back and I'm gonna get myself another cheapie but now I do have this extra ground wire here um, so I'm just gonna put it right on the other side 
So these just push in. Um, I didn't get it on camera, but basically, but basically these just pop right in like so, and then you have a good connection there. And you want to make sure none of these are going to pop out. Because funny, funnily enough, they put these electrical wires right next to the oil tank. Um, not clever, but um, it is what it is. All right. And make sure you put your two ground wires now on. Alright, and it's on. Let's get some water and test it out. Alright, starting off with a good battery here. Alrighty, got the motor in a bucket. So full disclosure, I read a little bit more about these wires and apparently these bullet connectors are notorious for having bad connections and shorting out your voltage regulator. So it's now winter, so I'm not going to worry about this right now because it's actually kind of cold. But um, in the spring I'm going to go ahead and take off my oil tank here and then check my oil injection lines. And when this tank is off I'm going to go ahead and, and use some um, watertight marine splice connectors in here. But I hope this video helped you. Uh, thanks for watching.